What's happening, friends? Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick, and on this channel, I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. Today's video is about one of the topics that I get asked about most frequently, and that is impermanent loss. Pretty much every time I post a video about yield farming, someone asks, what do you think about impermanent loss? Should I be worried about impermanent loss? So in today's video, I'm going to try to demystify it a bit. I'll talk about exactly what impermanent loss is, how significant it is, and when and when not you should be worried about it. Cool. So there's a lot to cover. So let's jump right into the video then. First thing you need to understand to understand impermanent loss is how an automated market maker works. So in a traditional exchange, you have an order book where people put in buy orders and they put in sell orders, and then those balance out to find a price. Automated market makers like Uniswap, SushiSwap, Trader Joe don't operate that way. Instead, they have something called a liquidity pool where, where uh, people provide different assets in each side of the liquidity pool, and then the ratio of those assets determines the price of a uh, cryptocurrency. All right, so, so let's add a bit of color to this. So uh, first, here's an example of a liquidity pool. Trader Joe is the most used exchange on the Avalanche network. And in this pool, for example, you have USDC on one side and AVAX on the other. So if you want to swap between those pairs, if you want to buy AVAX, you put USDC into the pool and the pool spits out AVAX. If you want to sell AVAX, you put AVAX into the pool and the pool spits out USDC. And that's basically how it works. And then uh, impermanent loss occurs when, uh, well, impermanent loss has to do with liquidity providers because on the other side of the equation, there are people who are providing liquidity. So there are people who's say, I've got USDC and I've got AVAX, I'm going to deposit that into the pool. And then when these other people are swapping in and out of AVAX, they're paying a slight fee and that goes to the people who are providing liquidity. And that's basically how it works in a nutshell. Um, and, and let's add a bit more color to that. So, so uh, for example, say, say we have a pool here that is AVAX and USDC, like I said before. And in this example, We'll say AVAX is $3 for the sake of simplicity. So I know it's much more than that right now. Um, and, and each half of the pool has to be balanced. So 50-50, there are some exchanges that use other ratios, but we'll say 50-50 since that's the most common. And so here, the, if in this initial starting state, the pool would say, okay, there's 5 AVAX, there's 15 USDC. 15 divided by 5 is $3. So there's $3 per AVAX. So basically, this is telling the pool, if someone comes up to it and they say, I want to buy some AVAX, they can deposit three, AVA, three USDC and receive one AVAX, although it won't work out exactly like that, as we'll see in a second. So, so you go up to the pool, you deposit one USDC, you receive maybe a third of an AVAX around there. So now the pool has roughly 4.7 AVAX, 16 USDC. Great. Now let's say you decide you want to buy another, you want to put another USDC to buy some more AVAX. Problem now is that the ratio is no longer three to one because there's now less AVAX in the pool because we just took a third out and there's more USDC because we just deposited one in. So the ratio now would probably be, some, or the price would probably be something like $3.3 dollars per AVAX or something like that. So, uh, but still, you know, you, you want another AVAX, you deposit another USDC, get slightly less than a third this time. Um, and if you keep doing this, you keep depositing USDC, then eventually you'll get to a point where the price of AVAX is actually $4. And in this case, it would be roughly when, when uh, you had deposited around 17.2 USDC, it's slightly above that. Um, and, and, and so that's basically how the price adjusts, right? So then imagine you put in $100, you're going to really, really swing the price. Uh, and likewise, if you want to get rid of AVAX, you can put it in here and get USDC, but each AVAX you put in you'll get progressively less USDC. So there is always some of each coin on each side of the pool, but as the ratio changes, the price changes. And that's basically how an automated market maker works in a nutshell. There's other great videos on this that go into it in more detail if you want some more color to the picture. And so then what is impermanent loss? Well, on the other side of the, of the uh, trade, uh, well, not even on the other side of the trade, sort of officiating the trade are the people who provided liquidity. Uh, and that's us, us farmers, pe people who do DeFi are usually providing liquidity for these trades. So we're the ones who have our tokens in the pool. 
So in this case, we started off, we put the initial 5 AVAX and 15 USDC in the pool. Imagine you are now the liquidity provider. And so you have your tokens in the pool, people are trading, and eventually we get to a point where you have you know, roughly 4.3 AVAX at $4 each, and you have 17.2 USDC still at $1 each because it's a stable coin. So then if you do the math on how much your total position is now worth, excluding any fees you received, it would be roughly $34.5. Not exactly, but I rounded $34.5. So it did increase because you have more USDC and you have less AVAX, but each AVAX is worth more. So where does impermanent loss come in? Well, if we go back here and said, well, what if you had just held your position? What if you had never put any, what if you hadn't put it into the liquidity pool, you just held USDC and you held AVAX in your wallet? Well, now you'd have five AVAX that are worth $4, not $3 anymore. They'd now be worth $4 each, so $20. And then you'd still have 15 USDC, so it would be worth $15 total. Meaning that in total, your position would now be worth $35. So compare that to what it ended up actually being worth, 34.5. Basically, your impermanent loss is the difference between those. So it's, in this case, roughly 50 cents. And, uh, and, and this can become very significant if, for example, rather than going from 3 to $4, the price of AVEX had gone from 3 to $100, as it did did uh, from summer 2020 through, through uh, fall of 21. So it went to, from 3 to 100, $100, and then you may have missed out on a lot of gains. Um, and that's basically what it, what there is to it. Um, there's a calculator and you, you can use to calculate how much impermanent loss is that I will link to in the description. But that's basically how it is with added complications, like the fact that the size of the liquidity pool is changing if you are doing it in reality. But it's, this is basically what it is in a nutshell. So then uh, the, ne the next thing that you'd be wondering if you are a farmer is... Does this matter? So let's look at some numbers for, for how much the effects of impermanent loss actually is in different scenarios. So in, in this new scenario, be a little bit more realistic with the price, we'll say AVAX is $50, USDC is $1, $1, and we're going to put $1,000 total into the pool. So in that case, we're putting in 10 AVAX and we're putting in 500 USDC for $1,000 total, 500 on each side. Remember, it needs to be perfectly balanced. Now let's imagine AVAX goes up by 10% to $55. We would now have roughly 9.53 AVAX in 52 or 524.4 USDC. And if you do the math, basically we would have $1,049 versus $1,050 if we had held. So the impermanent loss in this case is less than 1%. Uh, it, it is not very significant at all. And, and this is rounded. It would be slightly below 1,049. And, uh, and, and yeah, so that, that's the first example. And let's say AVAX goes to $100. So it's now doubled. It was $50. Now it's $100. USDC is the same. Now, impermanent loss starts to kick in a little more. We now have $1,414 versus $1,500 if we had simply held. Uh, but even now, you can see that it doubled, and our impermanent loss is around 6%, uh, which, which is actually not not uh, that bad when you consider the fact that some of these pools, the APR, might be might be 50%, 100%. So as long as that as long as it took more than a week to double, you would make back your your funds plus some. Now let's look at another example. Imagine that it quadrupled. So it went from $50 to $200. You now would have five AVAX and 1,000 USDC worth a total of around $2,000 versus $2,500 if you held. So your impermanent loss in this case is around 20% from what you would have had if you had held. So, so this is where it starts to become a bit more significant and you would need a higher APR to justify this if you thought that it was going to quadruple. And, uh, and, and then, you know, as, as you continue to go up, it would get more and more extreme. So when should you not worry about this? Um, basically, you know, the overarching thing is when APR outweighs impermanent loss, right? Uh, that's the only time you, you would want to provide liquidity is if you think the APR is more worthwhile. And, 
And I think most of the farmers we look at on this channel, it, it is worthwhile. If we're looking at something with 100%, 150% APR, then you wouldn't need a lot of impermanent loss very quickly to make up for that. So, so for example, in this previous thing, if it went quadrupled and you had 20% impermanent loss, that's probably going to happen over a period of, you know, if it's a normal coin, maybe six months. So, so that's a lot of time to accrue fees in compound while while you're suffering that impermanent loss. Um, and so that's the first thing. Uh, another thing is when assets are highly correlated, because remember, you don't just have to pair with stable coins. So for example, if we went back to Trader Joe, imagine if instead of USDC, you had AVAX paired with Joe, the token for Trader Joe. Well, it's not going to pull it up right now, but, but, but if you had it paired with Joe, Joe is highly correlated with AVAX. So if AVAX goes up, Joe's probably going to go up too, which means that you wouldn't suffer as much in permanent loss because if they both double or one goes 2x and one goes 1.5x, then, then the, their ratios stay fairly similar. And, and finally, the time when you may not worry about it is when you're bullish on both assets. So even if they're not correlated, imagine that you really liked Phantom, FTM, and you really liked Avalanche, AVAX, and you had those paired, then there might be times where AVAX has gone up more than FTM. There might be times where FTM has gone up by more than AVAX. But if you are in that pool for, say, six months and one goes 10x and one goes 7x, then then their ratios are still fairly similar, even if they're not exactly the same. So maybe you suffer like 3 4% in permanent loss. Meanwhile, you are earning incredible fees the entire time. And, uh, and that's basically when to not worry about it, as, as you can tell. I think that in most cases that we would look at with farms with high APR, the APR would outweigh in permanent loss. However, there are some exceptions, particularly if you're looking at micro cap coins. Um, so hopefully that helped clarify what exactly in permanent loss is and when to worry about it. If you have any other questions, please drop them down below in the comments and hopefully I or someone else can help you out. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter. That's all I got today. Till next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.